Hey everyone, this is Baylor, and in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to add a template to our um, our site. So uh, the whole point of this is so that we can actually set it up so that a user can sign up to the account or sign up and add an account. Uh, they can log into their account, and then we can actually display information about the user's account. Uh, so the first thing that I've done is I've gone ahead and designed this template. It's a very simple template. It doesn't do a whole lot. Uh, it, it, but the main thing that we're going to focus on in these videos is the navigation at the top and the gray box for content. So you can see that we have a login page and it's something I just threw together and designed. It's nothing special. Uh, and then also a sign-up page, which is also very simple. Uh, but you'll notice that when I sign up, I want a first name, last name, an email address, and the username and password. So what we're going to do to get this is I've gone ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and connect and go to the users table. You can see that I've added three new columns to the, the database. It's first name, last name, and email address. And uh, these are all of our care at 120 uh, except for email address, which is 200. So uh, you can add that to your table if you want first name, last name, and email address. Uh, they're not required. And in addition, I've gone ahead and filled that in. So I put my first name, last name, and my email address. And um, you can do that as well. It's really simple. Uh, in SQL Pro, you know, you just double click and enter a title. Okay, so let's go ahead and set this up so it'll actually work. Uh, this video, we're just going to get this template thrown in there. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the login demo template that I made. Let's throw that out of the way so you can't really get in the way with it or so it's not in the way. Uh, the next thing that we've done, and I forgot to mention this, but uh, I've updated the MySQL DB class uh, and I've designed it to use a singleton method so that you don't have to initialize uh, the MySQL DB class all the time and you don't have to work with a global variable. Uh, so the big thing here is that you can see we're getting this called a function where uh, that's not, that's not, doesn't exist. Uh, so the way you do it is previously it was something like this. You would say MySQL equals MySQL uh, wrapper. Uh, actually, it was new. And uh, here you just threw in the params above. Uh, and you'll remember that. And then in our user class, we actually just globalize that. Inside of our find by username, we just globalize that variable. Uh, well, the, day, the way you do it now is instead of doing that, you actually come in here and you'll say MySQL equals MySQLDB instance, like that. Return everything's going back to normal. Uh, essentially, the reason for that is two things. Uh, the first being that you don't have to have the global variable, uh, but the way you get it is you can always call MySQL equals MySQL um, or DB instance and reload it's still working uh, but the thing is if you don't if you forget to connect uh, when you run this it says please connect to database using MySQL DB connect and it says you need your host user pass and name so that's the big point of it the big reason I've done this is so that when you're working with this you don't have to have a global variable um, and you don't accidentally initialize the class more than once um, because if you do, which I'm not really sure what happened, um, I guess nothing happens, but it shouldn't do very much. It should just return it. Okay, so that's the big thing. You just need to come in here and say MySQLDB instance if you're actually using my class. Okay, so let's, oh, we have it over here as well. Okay, so I also did that in the save method. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually kind of get our template into place. Um, the first thing I want to do is rename this to usage.php because this file is actually just to kind of give us a template so we remember how do we create a new user, how do we find a user, and how do we authenticate a user. Uh, the, the next thing I want to do is I want to create a folder called libs for libraries. And inside of this, I'm going to throw in my two classes, the user class and the MySQL DB class. And when I do that, I'm actually going to need to come in here and put in, change that directory. So the whole point of that is so we don't have these files just floating around. Uh, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new folder called common. 
And inside of here, I'm going to have header.php, footer.php, and these are going to have our kind of our template. So in header.php, I'm just going to go ahead and grab the the top portion of my HTML file. Uh, you can see it's just a basic HTML document. I start the HTML and stuff. Um, I put in the navigation and I open the section tags. So in the footer, we're actually going to need to close that section tag and stuff. So we close the section, we add our footer, uh, and we close our body and stuff. So if we want to kind of see this working, we can create a new file. We'll call this index.php. And I'm just going to say php require libs header.php. And uh, the other one's going to be footer.php. So if I reload, um, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Okay, so there we go. Now you can see they're actually getting that template. Uh, what I'm going to do though is because this isn't working. Oh, okay. Come on. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have I have the template here. I'm going to throw in the style sheets folder that I made. So all of this will be on GitHub, so you don't really have to worry about that um, if you want this stuff. But just going to note that I have not tested this template here with this heading and stuff. It's been designed strictly for my computer um, because this is a font that's not very commonly, I don't know how common it is, uh, but it's called Chunk 5. Um, so I use that font and I didn't really set it up so that if you don't have the font that automatically uses it. And the other thing is I haven't tested it in any other browsers because I just wanted to give a simple template for this video. Okay, so uh, the, the syntax for this page here, if I can actually get the stuff where I want it, uh, inside of index.php is because we open that section tag, all I have to do is type in my header tags and throw in an unordered list and, I'm sorry, I'm not paying attention. Uh, put in my h2 tag and this will be the heading and you can see it automatically puts that in there and outside of here anything that I put in here automatically gets thrown in the right thing so that's kind of the purpose of having this uh, template that we've set up here so let's go ahead and actually start getting our navigation set up uh, because you can see the navigation is uh, not working and uh, I also want to set it up so that it automatically puts this class, this uh, gray background behind the text. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call it functions.php. Like uh, the thing about this whole template that I'm throwing together is that it's really sloppy, and I really wouldn't recommend it for designing a website because everything's not linked very well. It doesn't have very good structure, um, but this that the whole point of this tutorial is to show you how to authenticate users and stuff. So I, I'm kind of skipping that part of file structure and stuff. So in header.php, we're actually going to want to include uh, functions.php. So everything's still working here. Um, if I open some text here, you can see it gets put there. Okay, so we're going to start PHP, and uh, I'm going to create a function called nav. And uh, what we're going to do inside of here is we're going to have a links array. And this is where you're going to be, you can put default navigation links. So for instance, we're going to have home that equals index.php. So the, the method that I'm doing here is this is the title that you see, and this is the, the URL that it links to, or the URI. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to run a for each loop on for each link as a title and a URL. And I'm just going to echo out a link, and this goes to the URL, and this goes to the title. So if I go into header.php and I remove this and I put in our nav, um, you can see we got our title. This needs to be wrapped in an unordered list. Okay, so that works. Um, let's go ahead and add more navigation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a uh, function at the top called current user. 
And right now, just because we're not all the way set up, we're just working with the template, we're going to tell it to return false. But what we're going to do here is we're just going to say if there is a current user, then what we're going to do is return, I'm sorry, we're going to say links um, your account equals account.php and links, um, oh, logout equals logout.php. Else, um, this is no user logged in. Um, here, what we're going to do is say links uh, login equals login.php, and I'm just going to duplicate this and say sign up links to sign up.php. Okay, so all, right away, this is going to work right out of the box and put in our login or sign up link. So everything's working over here. This is exactly what I want to have happen. I want to be able to just quickly throw in new navigation links when there's no user logged in. And if they are logged in, then we show different links. Um, so what we're going to do here, though, is you can see that home.php or index.php isn't showing itself. So what we're going to do for that to fix that is just before the for each, I'm going to create a class variable. I'm going to say that equals null. And after every for each loop, every after each loop, we're going to say class equals null again. But here we're going to do is we're going to say if our um, URL equals, I guess we can do three, um, server PHP self, and uh, then class is going to equal space, class equals uh, current. And right here we're just going to throw in our class. So if we reload, nothing happens. It's because this PHP self includes the prefix forward slash. So let's just append that. And now you can see that this actually got it. Um, if I echo it out for you, so if in case you're wondering what it looks like, that's what it looks like. It actually puts out forward slash, the file name that it's working from. And uh, we can test that because, you know, index.php matches it. So let's go ahead and actually create our new files. So we're going to have a file called login and a file called sign up. So if we uh, go back to index.php and copy these templates here and reload, if I go to login.php, you can see everything is working properly. We're going to different pages and we're getting those links. So that's everything that I want to cover in this video. It's not a very exciting video. We didn't do anything really that great, but hopefully um, it'll really set us up so that we can do a cool login stuff. I, in fact, what I'm going to do, just real quick, is go to login and sign up, and I'm just going to copy the forms that I created over to it. Um, they're not very good. Uh, I didn't do a very good job designing the HTML markup for this, but uh, I didn't think it really mattered because uh, it's pretty simple. And in the next video, I'll talk a little bit more about it because I did like first thing like this for the the ID of the field. Um, but then the actual name of it is uh, user, and then in an array format, we do first name. So we're looking more into that and how why I did it that way. Okay, so thanks for watching this video, and goodbye.